what if we could create a strong sense of belonging, purpose, and community every time we meet? What if we could truly live in purposeful community? We can begin in the smallest of ways. Most mornings, I make breakfast for my daughters, and one of my favorite breakfasts for them is an omelet. I beat up the eggs on the hot skillet and um, then serve it to them. And we have this moment where they look at the omelet and they're, is it runny? Is it cooked enough? Is it overdone? And we experience this shared connection in this wonderful breakfast moment that takes two minutes but reinforces all the love that we've ever had for one another and creates an opportunity for us to connect. And that's really at the heart of the purposeful community. I think a good deal of this came from my mother. She grew up on a small Caribbean island and was part of a very large family. And at family gatherings, even the smallest of kids played a meaningful role in helping the community to stay strong and connected. Each time there was a gathering, we would have appetizers, and the smallest of children would come and offer appetizers to each adult before serving themselves. That sense of community has stayed with me. When I went on to my first working role, I helped to produce the television broadcast for the 1983 March on Washington, commemorating Martin Luther King's historic 1963 I Have a Dream speech. And we gathered together 300,000 strong, sharing in a renewal of our commitment to the dream. And for the first time, we were able to broadcast that live globally. And so communications tools were starting to play a role in extending the reach of even this massive gathering. And so I took this in my, uh, into my rest of my work life, coming here to Seattle and working in the nonprofit sector with corporations and nonprofits and government, and developing a strong sense of how our communities can thrive and grow. So what do I mean by purposeful community? Because we've all been in different kinds of communities, and some are certainly more purposeful than others, and other purposes are more community-filled than others. What I'm really talking about is how purposeful community unifies people to act on shared values. A community that doesn't have a strong sense of purpose underperforms and doesn't live up to its promise. And purpose that doesn't have a, the shape of belonging that can, community can provide tends to be passion that gets frittered away. So bringing these two things together is critical for me in having a shared sense of belonging that can extend over time. So I think this is particularly important for three reasons today. First, we now can work in deliberately developmental organizations. In an Everyone Culture by Bob Keegan from Harvard, he talks about how a better me plus a better you leads to a better us. I mean, the point is obvious, but a historical perspective suggests that once we reach a, a peak after finishing school, we stop developing for the rest of our lives and flatline. But it's not the way it is. We continue to develop and grow throughout our lives. And our workplaces are now understanding this, and so we're creating meaningful ways for people to develop as individuals as well as for the good of the organization or company. And this has a positive impact on the bottom line, as well on satisfaction levels of individuals. Second, we're living in the social era, where we're connected via social media and many other ways. And in fact, the borders of our organizations and companies don't end at the walls of our offices. They extend out into the world of our customers and for all the people that we can serve and connect. In fact, Nilifer Merchant goes so far as to say that Purpose and community are the two defining attributes that determine a key advantage that companies can have today. And third, we have new structures for engaging community in what we do. These are a few companies that deeply include community in their practices, but many smaller companies and certainly organizations, government agencies and nonprofits use these as well. So, uh, what I want to do is give you an example of what it's like to engage in how this community uh, is expressed in work. I wanted to go on a vacation, and 
when I looked at the opportunities available, typically hotels give a fairly transactional offer. But my purpose was to have a rustic getaway in nature. And I couldn't find that in the traditional transactional hotel world. So I turned to Airbnb, where I could connect with someone who had a shared purpose of providing exactly that kind of a rustic getaway. And so I had a wonderful few days in this beautiful setting. And it's because Airbnb thought of this vision to connect anyone so that they could belong anywhere that we were able to connect in that way. And we're gathered here in another form of community. And bringing this experience of an event into our lives is something more and more organizations and businesses are doing. And here in our small group or in a large group, we can create a strong sense of scaled experience and community that can extend to hundreds, even thousands of people. And at the same time, we can still maintain a strong sense of closeness to those we care most about. And hopefully we can develop those relationships with the people we get to meet today. So in a sense, this takes us on a kind of community journey where we go from a first encounter of knowledge to a, some kind of a communication or transaction and becoming some kind of a member. But it doesn't need to stop there. We can develop ways for us to contribute, advocate, and even lead within our communities. And not only that, it gives us a sense that it's our belonging that deepens with each step along our community journey and that we experience rewards along the way that help us stay engaged and that we can provide those opportunities for our organizations and for our companies. So how does this work? How do we design our community strategies? First, you have to ask, what is the vision? Now, most organizations and companies have a vision already. For two of the ones I've already mentioned, Airbnb has the vision that anyone can belong anywhere. And Ted's vision is of ideas worth spreading. Those are clear and broad visions that many people can participate in. So having that as a wonderful aspect of your organization's vision is very valuable. Next, identifying the communities, first in the large sense, but also it's really worth looking closer and thinking about what are the sub-communities within the people that we connect with and serve, and how can we make sure that we include them? For larger organizations, this may be even looking at smaller communities and considering what is the community journey they could or should be on. And then for each community, there's an emergent process of setting the vision that typically comes from within that community to identify where it wants to go. And often, this can align with and needs to align with, in successful cases, with the broader vision of the organization. Setting clear, inspiring, vivid visions of where, what can be is vital in that process. Next, because community doesn't just happen in a single moment, it happens over time, we want to map the storyline and organize. There are a number of different common storylines that communities can go through. The development storyline is one that's typical from learning, where you gradually begin the process and then increase the difficulty level and then reach a plateau that can last for a long time or ready the organization or community for a next journey. It's a great format for those that want to reach those kinds of stable plateaus. Second, there's the aspiration or moonshot storyline, where you're aiming for an idealistic vision or goal. A lot of startups and other kinds of moonshot type projects tend to focus in this method and compress the timeline to reach a very ambitious commitment. And third is a transition storyline, which tends to help us be ready for a change or a difficulty that we know is coming ahead. Anticipating that can help people take that change in stride and lead us towards a better outcome. Next, we have to organize the, uh, the individuals who all have their own individual relationship with the purpose and connect also in their shared connection around what that purpose is and how they want it to be engaged. And there's an interesting thing that happens in leadership in communities, which is in a sense that everyone owns, each member owns the community as well as all members together own it and their leadership can emerge. In a sense, a member is a leader waiting to 
emerge, or a leader is a person who simply knows how to take turns. And that is the kind of good leader you want in communities, because they know how to free members to lead. Organizing often involves bringing leadership to a group dynamic, where a group can go on a quest to generate a project and develop dynamics that produce results. But these can scale, especially when members are empowered to lead groups in their own directions. This can create a scaled sense of sustainable community. And this model grew out of community organizing and was used very effectively by the Obama campaign and numerous other businesses and organizations use this to spawn and generate communities. Google's developer community self-emerged in this form and then the organization of Google decided, well, we want to create the space to foster and nourish that community. So self-sustaining communities can be supported through this. And then third, we want to design the experiences because as I said, the community is on a journey. And so you can create a series of events and experiences that takes people through the, the invitation and the initial belonging through sharing knowledge, learning, teaching, and ultimately leading. And of course, there are many different forms that you can add to make it appropriate for the journey you want to invite your community on. Setting the place for your community events matters. When we were going to plan for a year of future engagement with a community, we went to this wonderful retreat center in, on Cortez Island in the Canadian Islands. And we gathered there and were able to have a very fresh view about where we could go because we were in this unique and special environment. And in that spirit of remembering how important it is to create the future, remember every time we meet is an opportunity to create a shared future. So think about how you want to share knowledge. What is the most compelling form that will work for your community or your organization to create shared knowledge that is meaningfully, impactfully memorable? There are many ways that this can happen, from workshops to retreats to off-sites and so on. Leverage online platforms. This is from a series of Google Hangouts that we did, including 10 different languages over the course of several days where we involve people from many different countries. There truly are many different forms that you can use online today, from Facebook Live to many other, to extend the reach and opportunities to contribute for your community members. And then when it comes to, coming to getting the work done, make sure you have a good facilitated opportunity for people to contribute their best thoughts. So one of the things I've found, and I hope you will too, is that a community can grow to be larger than you initially imagine it possibly could. And as you go, remember to measure the process. Remember the progress as you go along. One of the key reasons people drop out of groups is a sense of not making the kind of progress that's necessary. But we can measure how many goals are achieved, how many people are participating, how much work is getting done, and we can keep track of that. And at the same time, we can honor one another and honor the engagement that people are giving because there are no small gifts. So, to sum, to create personal and purposeful community, set the shared vision, map the storyline, design the experiences, and measure and honor one another as you go along. So welcome. Welcome to the purposeful community. I can't wait to see what you can create, how you will decide who can come to your table, how you can grow the offerings that you make available pe to people, how you can design experiences that will enrich, enliven, and empower people to contribute and make the vision that you have for yourself, your organization, and for your world real. Thank you. <laughs>